Hey everybody, I just finished, a well, the first book in the Return to Fear Street series. This is You May Now Kill the Bride. Um, This is a newer Fear Street series that came out a couple years ago, I think 2018. There's like a little thing up here that says 2018. Um, I've already recorded this video like three times, and I keep pausing because I keep forgetting what to say. So I'm just going to kind of jump right into it. Um, I really enjoy the cover. This is really clever with the whole bouquet with the skull in there. Pretty cool. Um... One of the biggest things that I had trouble with on working on the review for this is there's a lot of characters. I mean, none of them are super important, but there's a ton of them. So, uh, yeah, um, this book is split into like different timelines where it's like present day or first it starts off in 1922, then present day and then, you know, different things like that. Um, it only has one whole story with the 1922 thing, but it ties into the other parts of the story but yeah let's uh try to jump right into this and let's see if i can go without pausing <laughs> so yeah um the first 1922 part is it follows two sisters named ruth ann and rebecca rebecca is this spoiled entitled girl and ruth ann is just this, like down to earth um nothing you know crazy um so yeah um rebecca is set to be marrying or is dating this guy named Nelson. And Nelson is this like hand picked husband that her fear dad, like they're all the whole family's fears, he picked. He picked Nelson. Nelson works with him. He wants to put um Rebecca and her to get married. Um Ruth Ann is dating this guy named Peter. And before I forget anything, I'm just gonna jump right into the story. Um basically what happens is um Ruth Ann is waiting one day for her boyfriend, Peter, to come by, and he never shows up. So this girl knocks on the door, who is Rebecca's friend. Rebecca says, here, your sister left this at the dance. Can you bring it to her? She brings it to her, and she sees um, Rebecca dancing with her boyfriend, Peter. And this infuriates um, Ruth Ann, so she goes up to the attic, and she starts trying to cast a spell on... Uh, Ruth Ann, or no, <laughs> on Rebecca. She goes upstairs to cast a spell. She has this bookshelf and it's full of like old Fear Street, Fear Family stuff, like their whole spell book and all that. And yeah, at the wedding, um, there, um, there's like this, um, they're at the wedding and, um, Peter, who is now going to be marrying, um, Rebecca. He takes her and he throws her off the cliff in just a shocking turn of events. People start, you know, getting scared and all this, what's going on. It turns out that Peter is a, Peter Good is actually, um, Peter, no, Peter, <laughs> turns out Peter Goodman is actually Peter Good, and he's a good, so goods and fears can't marry each other, and that starts to curse. Um, after that, and the other sister ends up falling off the cliff too, and yeah, this goes to present day. Alright, so present day, we follow a lot of characters again. And I'm not even going to attempt at, like, mentioning everybody, but I'll I'll kind of run through some of them. We have Nikki, who is Robbie's girlfriend. We have Robbie, who is the brother of um, two sisters. We got Harmony and Marissa. Marissa is set to being marrying Doug. And, uh, yeah, the weddings, this is part two, so nothing crazy happens yet. Um, other than one of the uncles, he starts just randomly throwing up feathers, right? And there's a squirrel stampede, and there is this uh, a grandpa who, you know, pulls one of the daughters aside, who is Harmony, and he says, hey, he says, I noticed, you know, you're doing, you're actually making all this stuff happen, aren't you? And it turns out it's true. She's actually, Harmony is actually making this curse happen. Why? We find out later on that um, basically what happened was, I think, um... Marissa was dating this guy named Aiden, and Aiden was, um, and, um, Harmony was flirting with Aiden, and he ends up, she ends up hurting his hand in a drill press accident, and, yeah, and so he blames her for all of this stuff, and that's basically what happens, and so he, you know, Aiden leaves, and so now Marissa is set to be marrying Doug, who is somebody who I don't think, even think she really wants, wanted to marry, so that's basically that storyline. Nothing crazy happens. Um, but at the end of the storyline, um, Marissa ends up going missing. All right. 
So we cut back to the, this is like part three already. I know I'm rambling. I'm trying to get everything out like of my head before I forget it. Um, so they, we cut back to part three and at the end of part two, we learned that Marissa went missing, went, ugh, went missing and there was a note left behind that says, do not find me or don't find me or something like that. Robbie points out that their handwriting looks a lot like his girlfriend named Nikki. And this part is really cool to me. Um, Robbie and, um, Harmony actually have like a good little bit of chemistry. There's not enough scenes with them too, because they're actually pretty funny. Robbie only cares about his girlfriend. He's obsessed with her. You know, he doesn't really care about helping the family. I mean, he's sad. His sister's gone, you know, stuff like that. But she just went missing. They don't know if she's, you know, passed away or, you know, fell off the cliff or anything. You know, they don't know. So, um, so they start looking for her. And Robbie goes to Nikki's house. And the mom of Nikki tells Robbie that she went camping. She, she won't be home. You know, don't call her. You know, just let her be her. So Robbie leaves and he calls um, Nikki and Nikki tells him, no, I'm not gone. You know, I'm still at my house. And that's weird, you know. So after this, um, Harmony is looking around the hotel for her sister, any signs. And she sees this guy and she ends up seeing Aiden, you know, the ex-boyfriend guy, um, getting out of a car and going into this room. And, he tr and she tries to stop him, you know, what are you doing here? And he doesn't answer. Nothing ever happens out of that. She stops and talks to this valet person. Ask him, you know, because she sees, like, the valet get his keys. And then she sees, like, the hotel manager. His name's, like, Mr. Himorto or something. And he doesn't seem to know anything either. Um, the next day, she goes. And nobody seems to know who any of these people are, who she's talking about. And, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> I think I got everything out that I needed to um, talk about, because, yeah, I, like I said, I've already recorded this video, like, twice, and I just, I literally paused on certain moments, um, this, the last two acts of this book was great, I really enjoyed it, the whole missing bride thing was really cool, the time perspective stuff was really cool, um, it got a little confusing at the end, but it was still very fun to read, um, the first two acts were just Okay, the first act I, I enjoyed a lot more than the second act. Second act was really boring. The whole throwing up feathers was stupid. And the squirrels, like, I don't know. You could have done something scarier, I think. But yeah, um, this is just the first book in this series. Um, the reason why I picked this book to read was because I was actually invited to a wedding. And I wanted to read something thematic. Um, I haven't read a lot of books this month. Um, and it's kind of crazy because um, if you looked at my other video... You'll know I picked out two longer books, and I just finished this one today. And we didn't even have internet until, like, a couple days ago. We had power. Um, for those of you who don't know, there was a hurricane that came through and really done some damage. Um, there's a lot of people out there without power still, and it's, you know, very sad. Um, but, yeah, I was blessed to have them. Um, nobody in my family was hurt or anything. So, yeah. Um, yeah, going back on topic of the book, um, that's the reason why... <laughs> I, I haven't really posted a lot of reviews or anything, but yeah, Return to Fear Street, I gave it a four out of five stars. I don't think it was perfect, but the last acts really did have me impressed. I'm excited to read more of these, but I'm definitely not going to have to have a big TBR when I read these because it took me a long time to finish this. Um, yeah, this one in Stein Tinglers took me about a month to read. So, uh, yeah, either I got to <laughs> start reading faster or, um, do something, but yeah. You may now kill the bride. I give it a four out of five stars. Please let me know in the comments below if you guys read any of these books. What's the best one out of these three books? Um, yeah, that's it for me, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.